Puppy. What's it asking? Given that the tank, aha, uh -huh, see, not so implausible. Given that the tank still has 20 liters left in it, when the water flow stops, find V as a function of time. Okay, so I wasn't just making it up. Let's just imagine that this spot down the bottom here, right, this bit that won't, that refuses to flow out, let's call that 20 liters. So 20, 20 liters? Yeah, okay. So there's a little bit left. So how do I use this to find I want vo volume as a function of time. Volume is a function of time. Okay, what am I going to do? Um, when t equals 25, v equals 20. Okay, so I can state the, oh, v, the, v. the information in the question, I can state that as, well, I suppose I could say v of 25 equals 20. That's using just function notation, and that's true. But it's not v as a function of time. It's v at a particular moment in time. I want something with t's in it, something that varies, something that changes. So what I'm going to point you to is back to this guy over here, this guy here, right? This is a derivative, right? If I told you, hey, I have some, um, some derivative like this. This derivative, it implies a function that it came from, the original function. We call it the primitive, right? Because it's where you came from. So what would you do to this to find out what y was? Integrate. You'd integrate, because you want to undo this differentiation process that happened before, right? So you differentiate both sides. On the left-hand side, if you differentiate this, sorry, integrate this with respect to x, you're going to get y. And you integrate this with respect to x, you get x cubed. But because this is not an indefinite inter sorry, this is not a definite integral, no boundaries. So you don't know which one of the x cubeds it came from. There's that whole family of primitives. You remember this? So this is going to come into play when we have a look at this question. I've got an expression for dv on dt. So in order to move towards an expression for v, I need to integrate this guy, right? So I'm going to integrate that whole function. What do I got here? 2t minus 50. And I'm doing it with respect to time. Okay, because this is a derivative with respect to time. Okay, uh, let's have a look at this. I'm going to pull that 5 out the front. And this is a pretty easy integrant. Can you tell me what we're going to end up with? Cool. So, as I keep on mentioning, the integration, like the actual calculus of this is not the hard part. Okay? The hard part is like, what direction am I going in? And what am I going to do with these functions? Right? So now I'm going to put these two pieces together. I actually usually do not mention this first because I don't need it until I write down this line. Right? I can find out what the constant is because I know a particular point that the function passes through. That would be like coming to this question and saying, OK, sure, this derivative could be any one of these primitives. right? But if I know that when x equals, oh, I don't know, let's just say it goes through the origin. I can use that to work out which one of the x cubes it would be. Well, it be x cubed plus 0 in this case. So I'm going to pull out exactly the same trick here. I'm going to say, I'll go to the next board. I'm going to say, but when there's a given time, namely at time 25, I know what the volume is equal to at that point. So I'm going to substitute, substitute that into my integrated statement over here. So I'm going to say, 5 times, what is 25 squared? I think it's 625. Yeah. Um, take away 50 lots of 25. 50 25s. One, five, That's 1250. Zero. Then there's a constant there. This is the right hand side I'm evaluating. And I don't know what that constant is. But I do know what the volume is. It's 20. Okay. Do you, you see what I've done? So now it's pretty straightforward to change the subject and evaluate. For C, um, what is this guy? This is 5 times negative 625. So if I add 5 lots of 625 to both sides. Can't you just divide the other side by this half? 5? Divide. No, yeah, divide. Not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> um, I'm just I'm solving for C, right? That's all I'm doing. So uh, there's no coefficient on that yet. Can Three, someone got a number for me? 3145. 3145? That's really. Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, so then I'm going to take this. The whole point of me finding out what this was was so I could go back and say what the actual volume is at any given time. So I can say, therefore, the volume is, and here's my expression. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, hold on a second. What have I done? Have I answered the question? What was the question? Find the volume as a function of time. Is that the volume as a function of time? Cool. Nailed it. You always, with all of these questions, you go through a, a, an amount of work and then you think, have I answered the question or not? Then it moves into part C, the last bit. And this is quite easy, really. The question was, well, therefore, how much water did you start with? What was the amount that was initially in the tank? So initially means t equals zero, right? So I'm in fact going to write that. Initially, t equals zero. It's worth saying that because um, you can have negative time in some cases. In this case, not because it's like, well, this is where it starts. It's full. Initially, t equals zero. Therefore, v equals, I'm just going to substitute in, right? And you can see because of what this is, I mean, I could actually have factored a t out, which would demonstrate this whole thing folds. It just becomes 5 times 0. And what you get left with is that constant I worked out before. Is it the plus the constant? No. The, when you solve for c, you've already taken So the question Jane's asking is, do I have to add 20? Right? Let's think about what this means. Right? How did I get this 3145 number? And the answer is, I got it from thinking about this piece of information. <coughs> And from thinking about the integral, right? So that t equals 25, the end point, and the volume equals 20 is included. It's baked into my calculation. So the c accounts for that. You see, in fact, it got oh. subtracted off. Okay. So I've already dealt with that, Don't need to do, which I will later on. But in this case, look, I've clearly used it. So it's done its job. Okay. So therefore, this thing, not quite to scale, started off with uh, three and a bit kiloliters, and then empty down until this point. Uh, yeah. 3145 liters. In fact, I should probably conclude. Um, therefore, kilo? Kilo, yeah, not mega, like, right? I thought you said 3145 kiloliters. And I was like, three and something, three yeah. liters. Okay. So I'm going to say, again, I'm going to add the units in now here as my conclusion. Um, therefore, we started with. The mega is what? Five? Mega is a million. Done. So, just rewind with me for a second. How do we approach this question? And you'll see this pattern again and again, right? You will be given a rate, and the rate may be constant, but it might be variable, as in this case. This makes sense, doesn't it? Why is it that the water slows down as you get closer and closer to the bottom? The pressure. What's constant? Didn't I just say it's slowing down? Okay. So, so the idea is, I mean, there's lots of different ways you can think about it. Um, you can think about water pressure. So all of this weight here from all of this, all these many, many thousands of liters of water is exerting pressure downwards. So the more water there is up here, the faster it will push out. And then it slows down and slows down and eventually it stops. 